Johnny Wah here, SRMA.com, another episode of Verbal Scrap with Shocker Schlocker in studio. We have UFC veteran Tank Abbott on the line. How you doing today? Yo, yo, I'm, uh, you know, I'm still here, left foot in front of the right foot, and uh, moving forward. <laughs> so, Tank, uh, we, had, we just want to get started with some uh, MMA questions. We wanted to ask you... What are some fighters in the UFC right now that, that you most enjoy watching, and what about them interests you and in how they fight? Um, who? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm guessing in you know, the... I know, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, but, you know, I, I really uh, can't really tell you anybody in the UFC that I'm really interested about anymore. Well, as far as local MMA, is this kind of like what you want to do? You want to go around, travel, promote local talent, and, and build a product of your own? Or are you just like being involved with, with local MMA in general? Well, you know, I'm a warrior. I never put down my sword. But um, the bottom line is um, I'm, I'm in here. I like to watch fights, and I like uh, young, new talent that wants to get out there and, and uh, can do their stuff. And... Uh, there's nothing more exciting than to go watch uh, people that uh, live their passion. Hey, Tank, this is uh, Shocker Schlocker, uh, the other guy on the call here. Uh, I've Honestly, I've been a fan. I've been watching you since the heydays back, you know, when Ken Shamrock was still fighting as well. UFC 6. <laughs> I was wondering, um, I, I watched an interview. That was, that, that was the, the actual first real UFC. <laughs> <laughs> ba- back when you guys uh, actually earned your money and fought more than one fight in a night, huh? There are three times a night, and uh, uh, the Gracies at the time, and they they actually started the uh, the whole show, but they had they no longer had anything to do with it, and um, it was not a conflict of interest for them anymore, and that's why they didn't fight in UFC six, and that's why all the fighters weighed a hundred pounds more than everybody else the next time. Huh? And they they didn't. They didn't they didn't get the pickers, and so it was the first real UFC that uh, went down without a conflict of interest. So UFC six is actually UFC one, <laughs> the original, the the very first. Um, that's an interesting topic because today there's kind of a a thought process that maybe the UFC isn't isn't using fighter pay correctly and it isn't really export, exploring uh, the talent that they have. And a lot of people argue that they are kind of making fighters their own self-product. What do you kind of think is the best way for fighters to promote themselves and, and their fights? Well, at, at, at the bottom line, fighting has got to be your passion. And uh, basically... Um, that's all it's got to be. You don't go fight for money. You don't go fight for fame. You go fight because you love to fight. And, um, you know, Dana White kind of ruined that in a, in a weird way. But you know what? At least it's out there and everybody gets to enjoy it. Do you, do you feel that, that Dana White has kind of ruined it for you as far as, like, putting it on TV? Or do you mean, like, it's something as far as not no, he, giving... He, you know, you know the thing like when you, uh, like a punk rock band or something like that, and they call you a sellout. Yeah. Um, for money, if you're not doing it for pat. Um, Dana White has kind of turned it into something for money and not for passion. But at the same token, at least he's got it out there for everybody to watch and enjoy. Yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword like that. And speaking of, you know things changing and the sport moving on. There's been quite a few fighters. It seems like there's been a retirement spree lately, at least in the UFC. And that kind of makes me wonder about your career. I mean, you were in, you were in the sport for a long time. Do you feel personally that like, you got out when you wanted to? Do you think you stayed later than you wanted to? Do you think you wish you would stay? Yeah, you know, no, no, you know I, I never did anything for money. and I, I'm, I'm very comfortable right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can tell you this. Um, it's never been about money never been about saying I just did a uh, fight in the backyard three months ago in December <laughs> uh, awesome. with, with Scott with Scott Ferrazzo you can look it up on the internet and we did that for fun um, and um, I don't fun and passion I don't I don't you know it's it's not about um, 
being famous or having money or whatever, that, that comes afterwards. You live your passion and you go after it. Well, speaking of passion, uh, I want to ask you what your opinion of of using performance enhancing drugs that that fighters have been caught recently using steroids and stuff. Where do you draw the line as far as passion, and what are your thoughts on people using drugs to maybe grow well, muscle? I've never done steroids. Yeah, I've never done steroids or uh, passion or um, what do you call them? Uh, PEDs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 I said the human growth hormone. I've never done any of that kind of stuff that makes me or you know puts myself further ahead. I've always been natural. Um, and uh, But it seems that like when these people that fight and they use steroids and human growth hormone and all that kind of stuff who call themselves the natural, um, <laughs> they, um, you know, I don't need to do that. I've never done it. It's not something that I need to do. Uh, and, uh, I was go just, ahead. I was just gonna say, say you talk a lot about uh, passion tank, and I've always been a fan of yours. I think it's because your demeanor in and outside the cage. You just always been really into the sport and loving what you do. Uh, one thing I'll never forget is I watched an interview a couple years ago where you were telling whoever was interviewing you that you know you don't care. You know you'll fight on the side of the freeway. You'll fight in bars. You'll fight in clubs. You just love to fight. Uh, is that how you kind of got into it, or do you have any specific examples, or what is it about that soundbite that I'm repeating back to you? What does that make you think of? Okay, well, let's put it this way. I fought in the backyard in 40-degree weather in Dayton, Ohio, three months ago. <laughs> yeah, Ohio. But, <laughs> yeah, you can look it up on the Google. You can Google it, Tank versus Ferrazzo 2, and um, we went for 18 minutes, and it was about fun. Well, how, how did it turn out, though? I mean, you gotta, you gotta let us know how it turned out. I I was, I wasn't in a, I wasn't in an arena, and I wasn't doing that. It's just all about fun. And how I got into it, I got in uh, because I was in jail for a beating of the sun. You said and, you, you said you uh, were in jail. Yeah, I've been to jail for beating people up. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and. um... The bottom line is, while I was in jail, I was out on work release, and I was working for a buddy's clothing company for his father, and uh, Ultimate Fighting t-shirts were being printed, and he got me application, and I filled it out, and through all the major twists and turns of my crazy life, I ended up... uh, becoming tank. I wasn't tank before that. I was tank because they needed, they said I needed to be a uh, black belt or of some kind of martial art. And I spent my whole life and I've boxed the last five years and I've been in well over 200 street fights. And they goes, well, this is a martial arts show. And I said, well, okay. And then they said, well, we'll just call you tank. <laughs> After any which way but moves with Clint Eastwood, the Tank Murdoch character was a street fighting legend. And I said, Tank Murdoch. Call me, right, call me Lucy, call me whatever you want to call me, just let me fight. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and edit your uh, Wikipedia page now that I've seen that. Uh, <laughs> So it's, it sounds like you still got gas in the tank, you know? Like you're still fighting and doing uh, doing stuff in the backyard in Ohio. Uh, a, a true warrior will never put down a sword. Well, I had one last question to ask you before we uh, got you out of here about um, kind of a warrior and passion. And I noticed, you know, you were born in Huntington Beach, California. There's another fighter that's from Huntington Beach, California, who has a passion in the UFC who keeps fighting but doesn't come out on the on the, <laughs> the winning side of it. And then, you know, he's kind of made himself the people's champ. Of, uh, and you coming from Huntington Beach, is there any anything you think uh, about the Huntington Beach area that may kind of give the people's champ a reason? Well, I, well you, you kind of broke up on me, but I think you're alluding to uh, uh, Tito. <laughs> yes. uh, the Ortiz. It, I try not to say his name as much as possible, but, you know. No, yeah, no, it's Tito Ortiz is the first thing from a warrior, and he's another <laughs> manufactured 
Foley uh, that Dana made up, like uh, Chuck Liddell. Um, those guys couldn't pick themselves out of wet paper bags, and I used to beat <laughs> Tito up. I used to beat Tito up and make him cry weekly. Oh, really? What, what, it, you did it like on a regular basis? Were you sparring partners, or what was he, it? He, he was my wrestling partner. He didn't like that I wrestled with him too rough. I gave, gave him his first uh, fight in the UFC against Gary Metzger, the other little guy with long hair. That, yeah, the uh, Stallone look-alike kind yeah. of guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, um, no, the only reason why people know who Tito and Chuck Liddell are is because Dana made up some phony joke story about them and gave them easy fights. But Tito is the furthest thing from a warrior. And he's, uh, it's disgusting to even think that people think that he could get a stepladder and trim my toenails. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say... You've kind of made my night, and I, I consider you now the people's champ. <laughs> From Huntington Beach. You've definitely made our, made our no, podcast. Don't, don't, don't call, no, don't call me the people's champ. I am the original Huntington Beach bad boy. That yeah. Bad. We're not just sending you a original, shirt with that on it. Huntington Beach bad boy that Joe Tillman trailed that for me, as well as many things that Tito has stolen from me that are, you know what, I, I don't want to get into a, uh, <laughs> a tirade, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Tito's been to jail more than 30 days at a time for stealing other people's property. You can look, you can, you can look it up Google on the it. internet or Google whatever. It. So, in my opinion, he is a thief and a scumbag. Well, Tank, it is fantastic to have you on the podcast.